So, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about simulation theory. Um, for those who don't know what simulation theory is, is simulation theory is life is based on everything is a simulation. Nothing is real. Uh, I have a theory that's going to make you think differently about life. I believe simulation theory can prove the existence of everything. Simulation theory can prove the existence of God. It can prove the existence of evolution. It can, it can prove the existence of angels and demons and ghosts. It can, it can prove the existence of aliens, even. So, here's my here's my little thought process. So, say this life that we're living right now, it's. It was designed by someone. So therefore, it's a it was created. So therefore, there's a creator. So therefore, there is a God. What does that God look like? Well, let's let's go back to us and what we're experiencing right now today in our life and how real um, video games are, how real CGI is. You know, if you look at some of the movies that are coming out today and you see how real everything is, and especially with AI, you know, how real things can be, you know, simulation theory is not uh, that far-fetched. And, you know, it, it also proves the idea of evolution as well, because for those who don't believe in God and believe in evolution and this whole back and forth argument, nobody can prove anything on both sides. Um, you know, it, it's programmed into our existence, our past, our thoughts, our ideas, our history is programmed into who we are. Did it really happen? Did our past really happen? Or is it just a program that was written for our heads, for our minds? That has yet uh, to be... Um, that has yet to be uh, proven because we we can't we can't really prove that because we can't really prove that we are in a theory. But you know, if, if you look at say for instance, you know, uh, uh, video games of today, we'll take you know Grand Theft Auto for example, and you look at what takes place in Grand Theft Auto, then you take a look at what takes place in real life. And you see, you know, when somebody goes on a rampage and starts murdering people and then the police chase them down, it's very much like Grand Theft Auto. Or Grand Theft Auto is very much like real life, whatever you want to call this. Um, and also, you know, if you look at how this life is designed, you look at a glass of water and you look at how perfect it is, how perfectly designed it is. Everything looks so perfect. And if you look at you know, uh, aliens, uh, the idea of aliens, um, and people, uh, there are some theories out there that people say that aliens are future versions of us. They're artificial intelligence of us, of what we've come to be. And that kind of proves, um, the butterfly effect because when, you know, you, you go back into pet into the past and you change something, you know, there are some people that remember it, some people that don't. That's the butterfly effect. And I think a lot of these aliens that are here are watching this simulation. That's why we can't see it. That's why we can't comprehend their existence. We can't comprehend their technologies because their technology is what made all of this. You know, picture this. Picture technology so advanced that if you're sitting there watching this on your television screen or your phone imagine that you're not really there you're not really sitting on your couch you're not really sitting you're not really laying in your bed that it's a program and you have an alien right here sitting in your chair watching you observing you right but you can't see him you can't see it with your two eyes it's the screen that's been covered that's been over you know placed over your perception over your reality there are things 
that control us that we can't see. Some would say guardian angels, some would say demons, some would say ghosts. But also, you know, if you look at the technology that aliens possess, they're interdimensional beings. So therefore, they can change anything. They can do anything. They can change your life, how your outcome is going to be, whether you live or die. Do they care? I don't know. I, I, I can't say if we are just a program or they're playing us like pieces of chest or checkers and they're saying, oh, let's do this. Let's put this right here. Let's see what happens here. Let's put this right here. Let's see what happens here. And that also, you know, that also proves the existence, existence of aliens because let's face it, aliens, a lot of people want to say aliens, how come they haven't made contact? Well, why would you want to make contact? I mean, think about it. When you go to a zoo, you go there to see the wild animals. You, you don't jump into the tiger's cage to, you know, try to be its friend. Otherwise, you're going to be eaten alive. Aliens are not stupid. They're not going to expose themselves and say, here we are. We're in the lion's den because they know how dangerous and how unpredictable humans are. So they know that we're capable of killing them. And we're, we're very unpredictable. We... If we took advantage of their technology, if we were in possession of them, took over their technology, the dangerous things we could do as human beings. I mean, you just look at us with nuclear weapons and what's going on in today's world, how unpredictable we are. Imagine if we had that technology to change, to do anything that we want to do. Most likely, we would probably do it for evil things because we're not advanced. We're not an advanced civilization. And also, you know, it, it proves, aliens also proves that, that there are ghosts. So when you experience, you know, a haunting or something moving in your house that's not supposed to be moving, or whatever the case may be, it's something, someone from another dimension, you know, from within this simulation that's controlled. I think we are trapped. I mean, there's no coincidence that we're, we're trapped on this big ball of dirt, you know, spinning through the universe, and we're trapped. We can't travel the stars, we can't travel the universe, and also, it, that gives light to simulation theory also because we can't, we can't comprehend any of that, you know, we can't. You know, it, it will take us thousands of years to travel s through space. And so simulation theory has has got us here, you know, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people believe in, you know, flat earth and what's around us. We're in this bubble. Essentially, we're in this bubble. Whether you believe in flat earth or not, we're still stuck in this bubble, whether it's flat, whether it's round, and it's no co coincidence why we're stuck here, is because that's the way the program was set up, right? When you play a video game, you can only go certain places and certain areas until you hit a wall, and you can't go beyond that wall because the program, there's no program beyond that wall. That's what the universe is. That's, the universe is just a huge program we are just a huge program. We're, we're moving along in this universe with no concept of what things really are. We just, we hear, we, we see, we feel, but what does that mean? Feeling, emotion, sadness, depression, anxiety, it's all within your head. It's all a program. You are in control of your life. You determine how things go. You can get yourself out of this situation. You just gotta think and say to yourself, this is not real. I am in control of everything because nothing is real. Nothing is real. Everything is already, it's not predetermined. You can always change things. <laughs>